Hi kids, it's Freya. In this video, we're going to learn how to program our first video game in Scratch. My dad is going to help us today. Let's get started now. Hi kids, it's Ty, Freya's dad. Today we are going to create our first game together. To begin, open your web browser to https colon slash slash scratch.mit.edu. If you do not see the username you chose in our last video in the top right of the screen, then you have to click the sign on button and type in the username and password. If you forgot to write it down, you'll have to click the need help and type in your email and it will send an email with your username and password. After you log into Scratch, where do you think you want to go next? Go to the create button at the top and click it. We want to give our project a name. Where do we name it? On the place where it says Untitled. What do you want to name your project? Fruit Chase. Okay, name it now. I click on the Untitled and I delete Untitled and then I type Fruit Chase. How do you save your project? I go to the file menu at the top and click it, then click the Save Now menu item. Okay, before we start programming, let's make a plan to describe how our game should work. We use the word requirement to describe how our computer program should work. In our game, we are going to have a cat sprite that is moved by using the mouse. It will try to catch the fruit sprite on the stage. Let's write out our requirements. Our first requirement is when the cat starts, the cat sprite will forever point in the direction of the mouse cursor and move. When the program starts, the fruit sprite should pick a random position on the stage and go there. After the fruit sprite has gone to a random position, it will always check if the cat is touching it. If the cat touches the fruit sprite, then the fruit sprite will make a sound. Next, it will hide. Next, it will go to a new random position on the stage. And finally, it will show itself. It will keep waiting for the cat sprite to touch it again and repeat requirements. Okay, Freya. What do we do for our first step to make our fruit chase game? We click the cat sprite, then we click the events category and get a when green flag clicked block and put it in the code area. Yes, that is correct. That block tells the computer where to start when the go button shaped like a green flag is clicked. This button will tell the computer to run your program. The computer will run each instruction starting with the block under your when green flag clicked block in the order from top to bottom. To make things easier in our program, let's name our cat sprite cat. Naming is one of the most important things in programming. It is also one of the most challenging things. If you choose good names, then it is easier for other people to read and understand your program. It is also easier for you to read your program if you have not looked at it in a long time. So let's name our cat right now. We want the cat to forever point in the direction of the mouse pointer. What code block tells the computer to do something forever? We go to the control and then we find the block that says forever. Then what do you do? I drag it underneath the when green flag clicked button. What should the cat do next in order to follow the mouse? Let's think about what would you do when you want to follow a person. If that person is behind you, what would you do next? I look where I want to go, then I turn around. Okay. What coding block does something like that? Can you guess which color category the block is in? I know, the blue motion category. Okay, try to find the block that does something like turn around under the motion category. You have to get the block point towards mouse pointer. What do you do with that block? Where does it go? You have to drag it inside the forever block. Why do you think it goes in the forever block? Because we always want it to point towards the mouse pointer. Why not put it under the bottom of the forever block? Because then, then when we play the game, the cat will not always point towards the mouse pointer. What will it do then? How many times will it point in the direction of the mouse pointer if we put it on the bottom? It will point in the direction zero times if we put it under the forever block. Yes, that is correct. But do you know why? It cannot attach to the bottom of the forever block. That is true. Each block has a shape like a puzzle piece. So only certain 
shapes can fit together. But if it could attach to the bottom of the forever block, what would the computer do? It will not keep pointing towards the mouse pointer because the forever loop will keep doing something over and over again and it will never get to the next block. That is correct. What do we do next for our requirements? After the cat points in the direction, it has to move. So we need to find a block to move the cat. What category do you think we can find that block under? I know, the motion category. You get the block moves 10 steps. Where should we put that block? Inside the forever block. There are two places where it will fit inside the forever block. Which place should you put it in? Think about your steps to accomplish the requirements. When you are following a person, do you move first or do you turn in their direction first? I would turn in their direction first, then I would move to them. Okay, so where are you going to put the move block? Put it where you think it should go. I will put it under the point towards mouse pointer block, just like I would do when I follow a person. Okay, I think we have our first requirement done. Let's look at our next requirement. We don't have a fruit sprite yet. How can we add one to the stage? We go where the sprite list is. Then we go to the sprite menu and click on the icon that looks like a magnify glass, which is the choose a sprite menu item. Wow, there are lots of sprites to choose from. What do we do next? If we want a fruit, we choose the food category, then we look for a fruit. Then when you find a fruit, you click on it to add it to the stage. I'm going to choose the strawberry. Okay, now we have our strawberry sprite on the stage. Let's look at our requirements again. What should we do next for the code blocks for the strawberry sprite? We should click on the strawberry and move it to a random place. We want the computer to do that when we start the program. What should we do next? I know. First we go to the events category and click on the code block. When green flag clicked, and drag it onto the code area for the strawberry. Okay, next we need the strawberry to go to a random spot on the stage. How do you think we can do that? Is there a code block? What category do you think we should look at? I know, motion. Okay, what block will move our strawberry to a random place? Go to a random position block. Okay, where should we put that block? I have to put it under the one green flag clicked code block. Okay, Freya, before we keep going, let's try our program to see what it does now. Do you know how to run our program? I know we click the green flag button above the stage to run our program. Okay, try it. What is happening if you move the mouse cursor? The cat is following the mouse cursor. Is the program complete? No, I have a question. Can we make the strawberry move by adding more blocks? Yes, we can add more blocks to make our strawberry move. How do we stop the program? I know. Click the red button next to the green flag button. Does the red button remind you of something? Yes, it reminds me of a stop sign. Okay, so if you want to stop your program, just think of the stop sign. Daddy, I have another question. Can we make the strawberry smaller? It is too big. Okay, let's do it. How do you think we should do that? We, we click on the strawberry and we go where it says size on the sprite list. And we click on where it says 100 and change then the number to a smaller number. 100 is the normal size. We call it a percent. If you choose 50, that is half the normal size because 50 is one half of 100. Do you want the strawberry to be half the size or smaller? I want half the size, so I'm going to type 50. Okay, let's look at our requirements again to see what we should do next. How do we do the requirement that we do something over and over again forever? I know. We go to the control category and get the block forever and we drag it under the go to random position block. Okay, our requirements say if the cat sprite touches the strawberry, then we have to do a bunch of things. We call the if some condition, then do something, a conditional. And in Scratch, this type of block can be found under the control category. Can you guess which block it is? I know. We get a if, and then block, and drag it inside the forever block. Okay, do it. Make sure to click the strawberry sprite first before you add blocks, so that we make sure 
that we're adding code to the correct sprite. Okay, our requirements say we have to check if a cat sprite touches the strawberry. Where do you think we can find a block for touching? I know. We go to the sensing category because touch is a sense. Okay, what block in the sensing category tells us a sprite is touching another sprite? Touching color. The requirements say touching strawberry sprite, not a color. Are you sure you want the touching color block? No, I think it is the touching mouse pointer block. I'm going to put it in that six-sided hexagon spot after the if word on the if then block. Okay, try it. Let's always try things to explore and see if it does what we want. In programming, you can always change your program if it does not do what you want. I'm going to change the drop down to cat because the cat has to touch the strawberry and not the mouse pointer. And we named the cat sprite cat. Okay, what do our requirements say we have to do next? Let's see. If the cat touches the strawberry, then we have to play a sound. Can you guess where we can get sounds? I can guess. We have to click the tab that says sound above the code blocks. Can we play the sound? Yes. Click the play button. That is the chop sound. Do you want to use that sound? Yes. Okay. It's already in our sound list. So let's go back to the code area. I know. We press the code tab above the sound palette. Okay, so we have to play a sound. Where do you think we can find a sound code block? I know, in the sound category, and we pick a block called play sound chomp until done block, and we put it inside the if then block. Okay, let's try running our program to see what happens. Remember, when you first start learning to program, it is important to add a few code blocks to your project and then run the program to see what happens. This is the best way to learn programming. Learn by doing. You can hear the chomp sound when the cat touches the strawberry. Can we add more blocks so the strawberry hides and goes to a random spot on the stage? Yes. Let's stop the program and add more blocks to finish our requirements. So we played a sound when the cat touched the strawberry. What else do we need to do? We have to hide the strawberry. I'm going to the looks category and I'm going to get the block that is named hide. Okay, do it. Where should you put it? When should it hide? I will put it under the play sound block. Okay, what's next? I will go to the motion category and get a block that says go to random position and put it under the hide block. Okay, do it. What's our next requirement? I know the strawberry has to show itself. How do we do that? We have to go to the looks category and get the show block and put it under the go to random position block. Let's try our game and see if the game does all of our requirements. There is a full stage button that makes the game bigger on the screen. Let's try that this time. We can make the screen smaller by clicking that button again later. Yes, the game does all of our requirements. Can we add a background to the stage? Sure. Can you guess how to do that? Yes. Go to the stage menu and click the magnify glass and choose a backdrop. Wow, there's lots of backdrops. What do we do next? We pick the backdrop that we want. I want to choose the jungle. Okay. Let's try our game one more time. Okay, it looks like we finished making our first game. If you visit the link in the description of this video, we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this game that you can print out. We also have some extras where we show you how to add a score that counts how many times you've touched a strawberry. Thanks for watching this video. We are going to keep making games and teaching you programming with Scratch in future videos. In this lesson, we made our first game. We learned how to use code blocks to animate sprites. We learned how to change the background. We learned how to add sounds to our game. 
As you keep practicing, you will get better and better at programming. In our next lesson, we will learn how to make a car race game. Subscribe to my channel to get notified of new video lessons. And visit nextlesson.com for step-by-step -step instructions you can download and print.